data. All right. All right. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Fams. I'm at Hamilton Medical. I'm one of the uh, clinical specialists and I uh, cover your territory. Um, thank you for having me, Chad and Scott, and everyone else that is going to watch this later. I appreciate you guys uh, giving me the opportunity to present you guys the, uh, the 3.0 software update uh, on our X-Series platform, which is your C1, T1, MR1 um, ventilators. <clears throat> All right, so um, purpose of this, obviously, I know you guys have you have some vents that are coming that have the newer software and you have some that don't have the newer software 2.0, we call it. So, um, you know, there is not major update that warns ventilators to go back and get immediate updates. So I know you might have you know, two different platforms that are a little different as far as looks and a few things. Um, Chad, just keep this in mind. I believe we talked about this a little bit, um, you know, if you're looking to update any of your ventilators in 2.0 vents to 3.0, um, there's a charge for it. However, if you are, if you can wait, my recommendation would be when a tech come out your way to uh, do any sort of service on any of these ventilators, they can, they can make the change at that time without any additional charge because they're gonna be already on site, just so you're aware. All right, so the content overview of uh, what I'm going to present, um, we're, we're going to be talking about the, uh, the 3.0 software update on the T1C1 MR1, and then um, there's new graphical user interface we're going to be going over. There's some general improvements. Um, also, the high flow, it's a little improvement on that as well. And um, you can also, I don't believe you guys have, but you can also access the H900 humidifier with the newer software update. Also, on your MR1, um, Tesla Spy interface has a little bit of an update to it. And last but not the least is the Hamilton Connect we'll talk about, All right? <clears throat> and we'll get into it. All right, so on your um, graphic interface, you know, if you're comparing, you know, the 2.0 device with a um, 3.0 device, you will see that, um, you know, the background is darker versus blue and then um, the tone of blue, you'll see some, you know, differences as far as uh, visuality. <clears throat> um, one of the biggest updates, which is a big update as far as, you know, improvements, you know, on the 2.0 uh, software, you only will have two waveforms. You can put pressure stays, you can change the flow to volume or you can change volume to flow. Um, the, the newer software gives you the opportunity to see three updates. Um, so you will see your pressure flow volume without having to sacrifice one for the other. Another thing is that update is the, uh, the dynamic long. <clears throat> the dynamic long, um, you know, looking here, as far as what you see, there is no difference, but it's just the look of it. So. The 2.0 software shows the bronchial three here, <clears throat> the bronchial three showing blue. Now it shows white. Um, that's one of the uh, changes. And, um, but as far as, you know, the, uh, the obstruction changing on the actual screen um, to like say your severe, obstruction or anything like that, those are all the same. So if you have somebody that's a big time asthmatic, you have a severe increase in resistance, um, the bronchial three will turn red just like your previous software. So the biggest change here would just be your bronchial three being white instead of blue compared to the 2.0 software. If you guys have any questions, just stop me at any point. Um, the other one is, I know you guys said transport. I don't know how much you use this part here, but this is the vent status screen. This is more for weaning. Um, not a whole lot there other than, other than um, just the color of that particular screen. Um, same thing with ASV, um, <clears throat> ASV graph that has changed slightly. Um, the main change would be right here, your PNSP would be, it's the same on the 2.0, but 
But what we've added is the, the little rectangle. The little rectangle means the delta. We added the delta sign to know it's above peep. Um, that's really the, uh, the only update as far as the ASV screen is concerned. And as far as this particular area of the uh, graphic is concerned on the ASV monitor screen. All right. Um, so next up is your main monitoring screen right here, your main monitoring parameters. So these now correspond to the color of your alarm. So for example, we have our minute volume here. A minute volume is 6.9, which is a high priority alarm. If you go into your alarm panel, it's the same thing right there. Your minute volume alarm parameter is also red versus not having to show anything previously. Um, and then the same thing with the other one. So you have your data volume and respiratory rate. If you go into your alarm screen, they correspond with your uh, main monitoring parameter um, number. The other um, improvement or change is that if you um, wanna go back, so we have the low tidal volume alarm. You can touch this right now and it will bring you to a, your buffer screen. It will bring you to your alarm panel. So when it brings you to your alarm panel, when you touch, the, you, when you touch it, it'll, it'll show you, it'll give you some guidance to how to, how to resolve that particular alarm. So right now we have a pressure limitation. <clears throat> if you touch the screen, see where we're here, I go ahead and touch the screen, touch the uh, pressure limitation alarm um, ribbon right there. It will bring us here. And if it's an alarm that you're not familiar with, you can touch the screen one more time, touch the same yellow ribbon. It will give you a couple of uh, guidance or troubleshooting information of how to resolve that particular alarm. I mean, for the most part, you know, if you run the vent, you'll probably be familiar with most of the alarms, but you might get some alarms that you might need a little bit of help with. This come in very handy. Uh, the other big improvement that, uh, you know, so a lot of these, most of these improvements or changes are based off of feedback that we get from the field. Um, and then we, you know, we bring to the office and they, you know, the next software update, these get put on the list of things that possibly could uh, improve the user experience and, um, you know, patient care. So the other thing is your pre-app check. Um, the pre-app check, as simple as it is, some people just kind of get confused with, you know, what to do, especially the flow sensor part is concerned. So now when you go to do your pre-app check, what you'll see is you'll see illustration. You'll see pictures that tells you what to do. So in addition to your directions right there, um, you'll see pictures of what your next step would, what you should do to get that particular step um, accomplished. Um, and then the same thing with the flow sensor, like I said, that trip a lot of people. So now it'll tell when it's a flip flow sensor, it kind of shows you what exactly to do in order, in order to accomplish that step. And then same thing with the uh, CO2 sensor. <clears throat> so now, I mean, I, since we get, you know, the new software that I teach on, um, a lot of people are, you know, happy with the illustration, the pictures to show them what to do um, when doing the pre-op check. All right, some general improvements. All right, so um, you'll see that on the 2.0 software, um, the P limit, the pressure limitation, the pressure limitation was added to every mode now. Um, instead of before, the, the same idea has always been there, but the, the biggest is now you can actually change your pressure limit. Right, so before it's it, it's always ten below your high pressure alarm, but you cannot change it. Now you can change it, which is your safety limit. So if you're looking to increase that, if you go to forty on that, um, you can increase it to forty, or you can decrease it based on your patient. Um, your um, your your high pressure alarm will increase with it or decrease with it, depending on which direction you go. But it's usually ten below your high pressure alarm. So this you'll see now, because our, even our volume mode, pressure, pressure modes obviously is a given, but even our volume modes are uh, pressure target and volume guarantee. 
So if you're looking to get more out of that tidal volume, if you're looking to increase and get more tidal volume in, obviously you want to increase that um, your pressure limit. The other change and update is um, the delta symbol. I sort of touched on this a little bit. So um, you'll see a delta and um, the triangle <clears throat> added to every pressure setting now, um, which is letting you know that it is above peak. So right now, this is a um, this is a um, you know a setting of twenty of inspiratory pressure, not fifteen. Same thing with your pressure support, and the same thing with your pressure control. <clears throat> um, the other improvement is your driving pressure. And our driving pressure is one of probably the most indicators for survivability on vented patients. Uh, this number you can now see in your monitoring window. Okay. So if you know your staff is doing the vent check, you know, when they're going to monitoring on the third page, uh, your driving pressure number in addition to your plaque of pressure will, will be indicated as will be indicated right there. And your driving pressure is essentially your 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 your, your P minus plaque of pressure. It's just highlight on the screen is highlighting your driving pressure. This is your trended screen. So you can obviously change your screen not to have the dynamic clone, but you can trend. So you can trend your driving pressures. All right, um, high flow mode. Um, the improvement on high flow mode, I'm not sure if you guys have the high flow mode, but this is just a brief one. Uh, flow range is, uh, Um, flow range for neonatal, this is talking about, um, goes up to 15 liters. And um, your um, <clears throat> the other thing, other big thing is high, back in high flow mode, when you when you go into high flow mode, um, you might get an alarm that says you have the wrong expiratory valve. Now that alarm is gone, because obviously when you do high flow, you're not dealing with the expiratory side anyways. And if you go into monitoring tab, you will be able to see your flow rate. The other thing is we have the Hamilton H900. You could, um, if you do have the H900, you could configure the H900 with the ventilator, um, T1, C1, um, not so much the MR1 because that goes in the MRI suite, but uh, you, that's something that you can do. Um, I know you guys just got the MR1. Um, the, we sort of talked about this, but now, you get three ways to monitor your Tesla SPI. So not just you have the, uh, the, the lighting indicator here, but you'll see your alarm panel and you'll also see, I'm sorry, your, um, your alarm screen on top. You also see your, um, your alarm light showing. So you have three ways to figure out where you are as far as you know, being close to the magnet. Um, last but not the least is the Hamilton Connect. So on the newer software, you guys, you can, um, <clears throat> the code has to be entered first, but uh, you can actually download the Hamilton Connect app. If you go into App Store, whether Android or Apple, uh, you can download the Hamilton Connect app. So with this uh, feature, you can actually connect your, your mobile device um, to, you can, sync, you can connect your ventilator um, you can look at certain things. You, you, you can't make changes. You have to be so much so uh, much of a distance. I have to double check on that distance. I tried to make a phone call earlier, but I didn't get to the bottom of it. But, um, you know, you could, you, you know, you can download the app and connect to your ventilator and you can monitor your patient from a certain distance. This was something that was in the work for quite some time. We've been doing COVID. We're hoping that this will be launched, but because you know it had to go through some security testing and stuff like that, which is why it just finally came out and it's being launched. But um, the Hamilton Connect is something that um, I haven't seen many people use it yet. Maybe because it's still in in its uh, you know baby stage. But um, the you know if you have it downloaded, basically it'll look something like this. You can kind of look at your some of your numbers, and then you can see what your mode is, and you can uh, do some monitoring right on here. That is the Hamilton Connect app, and that's pretty much all I have. <laughs>